In the second program of this beginner's guide to photography, we come to digital camera choice. Basically, there are three types, compact, bridge, and DSLR. That stands for digital single lens reflex. Now, don't please make the classic mistake. And indeed, when I ran photographic holidays, I would get customers, photographers sometimes, coming with the most expensive digital camera, costing thousands of pounds, sometimes purchased the day before, expecting that camera to do everything for them. Well, those cameras are designed for professional and advanced amateur use, and you need an understanding of photography to operate them correctly. If you are looking for quick answers, then quite honestly, you'd be better off with a smartphone. You could argue that the smartphone has almost destroyed the compact camera market. I've got one here, and as you can see, they live up to their name. But I would regard a model like this, and it's a few years old, this one, I would regard a model like this technically superior to any smartphone. Of course, I can't access the internet with this, and I find making a telephone call rather difficult as well. Having said that, this type of camera, the compact camera, and there are models still available, are ideal for the budding photographer. The lens is an integral part of the camera. It is fixed, you can't uh, take it off. And in this particular case, it is a three times optical zoom. Now, as I said, this is a few years old, this camera, but more recently I borrowed from Olympus one of their tough range of cameras. And I took it with friends down to Wakehurst Place in West Sussex. That's a National Trust property, which incidentally is part of the Kew Gardens set up up in uh, London. So here are a few shots taken with the tough TG6. It is a compact camera, you can still buy one of these cameras today. The bridge camera does exactly what the title suggests. It is a camera for the photographer who finds the compact camera a little restrictive, but a DSLR camera a little intimidating. I've got one here. Again, it's a, a few years old, but uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't work properly today. It has a 15 times optical zoom and it's fixed to the camera. Now this is produced at a budget price. As to whether the quality throughout the lens is good, excellent throughout, perhaps is questionable. Depends a lot on what you wish to achieve and therefore what matters to you that is important. Because it is produced at a budget price, then maintaining quality over this 15 times zoom could be a problem, particularly at the telephoto 
end of the lens. Without wishing to get too technical at this stage, and I might add, we are now reaching the point quite early where a traditional understanding of photography becomes essential. But between wide angle and telephoto, because this is a variable aperture zoom lens. Now for the technically minded, you know what I'm talking about, you lose two whole stops between wide angle and extreme telephoto. And if with a camera like this you are photographing action, then because of the lack of light, then it becomes difficult under poor light to freeze the action. If it was possible to have a constant aperture zoom lens on this camera, that is the widest aperture, full aperture, is maintained throughout the zoom length from wide angle to telephoto, you don't lose that loss of light. Then the lens will be much bigger, heavier. Ergonomically, I think it will be unsuitable and also costly. So we have to make do with a camera like this with a variable aperture lens. And I'll show you with this set of pictures coming up next that need, that need not go against you if, of course, you understand traditional photographic values. I get situations where people say, no, you can't do that with this camera. But if you understand photography, you can. <laughs>
digital single lens reflex cameras and mirrorless as well that when you take the lens off like that then you are risking dust reaching the delicate sensor causing blotches on the photograph not so with this camera i might add olympus solved that problem back in 2003. You don't, of course, get that sort of problem with compact or bridge cameras because the lens is permanently fixed to the camera, so therefore the problem does not arise. Without getting too technical at this stage, I hope that I've given a clear explanation as to why you might choose a digital camera, compact, bridge, or DSLR over a smartphone. As I've said before in my previous program, a lot depends on what your aspirations are. Now, one thing you may have heard about is the size of the sensor. There are different sensor sizes, not like 35 millimeter film where we had one standard. No, we don't have that luxury here. And very often there is a heated debate as to which one is better, which I'm not going to go into here. Now, in program number three, I'm going to talk more about lenses and their importance and also explain the difference between optical zoom and digital zoom, there is quite a difference. Also, I shall be going into other aspects of photography very gingerly, such as apertures. Yes, you do need to understand them in order to produce creative pictures. And I shall be heading, you'll be warned, I shall be heading in that direction, possibly in the next programme. So, I hope I haven't scared you off and I'll see you eventually in program number three.